Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is James Snow. Um, thank you all for joining us for this marathon of a day uh, for Work for Home Comp. We've uh, 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 only got a few more left uh, and uh, been fantastic. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I'll, I'll start here. I'm going to be talking about Quick, uh, the uh, uh, the implementation for Node.js that we're that we're putting together. Uh, the one thing I uh, before I get into that, I'll say you know got to be careful what you order online uh, with the lockdown. Kids at school, like hey, I'm gonna order a soccer ball, so we can get out and play a little bit in the yard and stuff. Well, I didn't pay attention to the size of the ball, and it came deflated. So it's a rather tiny soccer ball. I don't think that our teenagers are going to be playing with that too much. So got to pay attention to what you're ordering online. Anyway, uh, so quick. Uh, I gave a talk at the NodeConf EU uh, uh, conference, I think, back in November, talking about introducing the Quick implementation that we're adding to Node. Quick is a new protocol. Um, it's UDP-based uh, instead of TCP. It's the new underlying transport protocol for HTTP 3 that's coming out. We're working on getting this implemented in, uh, in, in Node, even though right now it hasn't even been fully standardized. The IETF is still working on this thing uh, and, and working out the, the finishing touches for it. But all the implementations, browsers and you know middleware uh, proxies and everything else are working on getting the implementation support for it now. So we decided to go ahead and get a jump on that within Node. And there was a number of reasons that we're doing this. Um, HTTP 2, uh, we can kind of jump in here. HTTP 2 was added to Node uh, in 2017, uh, it's not too long ago. It added, you know, uh, you know, support for that, you know, the, the, the new protocol there. So it's full support for it. Uh, it's a familiar API. It's it's got the multiplexing, push streams, flow control, everything else. Unfortunately, it's not very usable. And the reason it's not usable is uh, although browsers support HTTP2 and although Node supports HTTP2. None of the stuff that you put between the browser and Node can, uh, uh, really supports HTTP on the back end. So Nginx will talk to the browsers over HTTP2, but uh, Nginx will not talk to Node over HTTP2. Uh, and yeah, uh, basically all the best practices out there, basically, you know, say don't put Node directly out on the internet, put it behind an Nginx or something similar. And if none of those will use HTTP2 to talk to it, then we, well, you can't really use it. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so you know, you know, HP2 is there. Uh, we can use it. There are there are use cases for it, but for the most part, um, it's it's not going to be super usable for most users. Um, and plus, there's a number of challenges with HP2 that the basically the industry only figured out once they actually deployed it. One of the reasons why we have HTTP2 is because of an issue in HTTP1 called head of line blocking. What you do is you send an you know a message right over a single connection. You have to wait till that message fully sends before you can send the next one. So if you're downloading you know a bunch of images and then a bunch of JavaScript files over a single HTTP connection, you have to wait for all those image files to download before you can get your JavaScript. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's really like you know going to a uh, you know you know going to a postal uh, a post office and having to wait in line until the person in front of you reads their mail uh, and figures out what they want to do with it before they you know before you can get yours. <clears throat> so HP2, you know, you know, it's like okay, well, we're going to solve this problem by multiplexing, but what they did, what they failed to take into consideration is that TCP itself is uh, you know has this head of line blocking issue. Uh, basically, it, you know, in the TCP connection, every bit of data put into a packet, those packets are transmitted. If that packet gets lost, all the other packets behind it stack up and can't be sent, right? So it's basically, hey, here's a packet. Did you get it? Okay, here's the next packet. Did you get it? And if you end up sending multiple HP requests over that single connection, it doesn't matter if they're multiplexed or not. If you lose one packet, you still end up blocking all of those requests. 
And so for unreliable networks like mobile networks or long distance networks saying going over the Atlantic, uh, HP2 actually introduces more latency in the connection than what we had with HP1. So, uh, you, know, you know, folks started taking a look at this and figuring out what they're gonna do with it, do about that, and the answer was to switch to UDP. And the reason uh, uh, we wanted to go with UDP is for very one very simple thing. UDP packets are independent of one another. If one gets lost, there's no impact on the others. In other words, the UDP packets can be sent in any order. They can be resent. Um, if they get lost, we just send it again. Um, that you know, that, that's great until you think you know with HTTP traffic, you really want to make sure that the entire message gets there, right? Uh, so what they ended up having to do with UDP, they're using that as the basis. What Quick does is it adds error handling, acknowledgements, flow control, packet sequencing, built-in encryption with TLS uh, 1.3, bidirectional and unidirectional streams. Essentially, it re-implements TCP on top of UDP, um, uh, and then you know adds the uh, the, the encryption uh, in there for, for for good measure. So. What this basically means is we can send a UDP packet and we can actually know that it got where it was going. Um, if we don't get the acknowledgement, we send it again. At the same time, right, we can still send these things in any order, right? So yes, we've basically re-implemented TCP, but we've uh, we've solved that problem with regards to the, the head of line blocking. We won't, you know, nothing else has to stop just because one packet got lost. We'll just detect that it got lost and send it again later on. Uh, the building TLS into this uh, is interesting uh, because it allows, you know, it allows every bit of traffic that goes over a quick connection to be encrypted. Uh, it's built into the protocol. It's not optional. It cannot, uh, it cannot be separated. The only way to create a UDP or, or a quick connection is to, to go through this TLS handshake. Um, there's a, uh, a joke that's been going around for the past couple of weeks before we are uh, tired of it. And in this day, day and age, we want to get away from doing handshakes. Uh, so everybody switched to, to UDP. Unfortunately, with Quick, you know, we're back to doing handshakes again. So um, um, the, the, the fortunate thing is they're about 60% faster uh, now with Quick than they are with, the, with TCP. So for the past year, I've been working on implementing this protocol within Node. Uh, and really what I want to do now is, is kind of talk about what we've done there, how we've enabled it, and where that is in the process in terms of landing in Node. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit how it works. If you want to create a quick server, you just need this, uh, you know, six lines of code. Uh, this gives you the, the, the you know, the, the, the bare minimum. It's a few more lines of code, you know, uh, a little bit of boilerplate that you need in there, but essentially you get, you know, you require the net module, you create the, uh, the the socket, you tell it to listen, you have to give it, you know, since TLS is required, you give it a key, a certificate, certificate authority information, you tell it what port you want to listen to, uh, and, then, uh, and then you wait for a new session and a new stream to be created. A session is the long running conversation between a client and a server. A stream is really just a, a, a data channel, you know, flowing data back and forth. Quick at the at, at the quick level, not we're not talking about HTTP three, uh, is just a data stream. It has no headers, um, that you know, the application headers at all. It has protocol level headers, but nothing at the application level. It's just a stream of data in in, in one direction or the other. All right? Streams can be unidirectional, uh, so that the 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 server, the client, can create the stream. Uh, if it's unidirectional, only the initiator, the creator, can send data, and the other end listens. Uh, and what, that's one of the unique things about Quick is that the client can create the session, but the server can create it, uh, uh, unidirectional streams back to the client. Uh, you know, basically implying that it doesn't not have to wait for a client request to come in first. Uh, or streams can be bidirectional, which is data flowing in both directions. And uh, uh, similarly, the server can also create those bidirectional those streams uh, with the with the client. 
So it, it's it's a very flexible protocol, very you know, very straightforward and uh, simple on the surface. Underneath, it's very very complex because it does all of the, um, it does all the flow control, it does all the error correction, it does all of the uh, uh, the encryption, all of that. It, we we had to implement within Node, um, um, you know, but you know, and try to find ways to not surface that complexity into the API. So this it's a very simple API surface for users to use, but a huge amount of complexity under the covers. And I'll show you that in just a couple of minutes. Creating a client is very similar. You get to create uh, uh, create quick socket function. You 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 create that socket. Notice it's the same function for client and server. A quick socket. Can be both a client and a server, uh, or a server, right? So it can be it can be either or at the same time, um, which is which is interesting. It's basically just a local binding to a UDP port, uh, and that can um, play both roles if you wanted to. So here we're going to use socket connect instead of socket listen. Again, we're passing it the key search. Um, you know, for the client side, the key and search is only required if you're using uh, client side authentication. But you want to tell it where you want to you know, what you want to connect to. As soon as you create, you know, as soon as you call connect, it will start the TLS handshake. Once that's done, the on secure event will will fire, and from then you can open your stream and start communicating. Again, at the surface, at the API surface level, very very uh, very very simple. Underneath the covers, it's it 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 is quite complicated. Um, Performance testing on this so far. Uh, anybody that has used Node for any period of time, uh, for doing you know you know, it, you know as a web server or TLS server knows that, that Node historically has not been a great TLS server. This should say TCP plus TLS right here. Um, with quick completion of the TLS handshake is 60% faster um, than the TCP over TLS in, in Node. And the reason for that is because the entire TLS handshake is happening at the C++ native layer without any interaction with the with with the JavaScript layer. Uh, we lose a lot of performance if you know every time we cross back and forth between C++ and, and JavaScript in Node. So here we're just doing it all at the native layer. Uh, ends up being significantly faster. Add to this the fact that Quick supports zero RTT uh, handshake resumption. So what that basically means is once you've established a connection once, you can reestablish it later on uh, faster without having this 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 handshake back and forth across the uh, uh, across the connection. So it's very 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 nice. And we're seeing a 20 to 70 percent faster data transfer rate with current benchmarks um, uh, once the, the connection is established. Depends heavily on on how that data is provided. Uh, a little bit of the structure here. So we have a number of objects, both at the JavaScript and C++ level. The implementation is actually designed to support uh, user code of the JavaScript, and eventually we'll actually be able to do native add-ons at the C++ level. They will also be able to create quick, quick service. Um, so we have quick endpoint, which is basically the UDP wrapping, uh, quick socket. Um, it's a, it's a protocol detail, but you can actually have a, a one quick socket can actually be bound to multiple UDP ports. Uh, so that's why we have those two separate. Quick session, that's the long running state for this thing. Uh, and quick stream, this is the thing that actually that you use to actually read and write data. Under, underlying all of this, we have a modified version of OpenSSL, modified to support quick. I'll go into that in a second. And then two helper libraries, ngTCP2 and ngHP3, which provide most of the heavy lifting for the quick specific implementation. Um, Let's see. It's important to say, you know, Quick is not HTTP3. They are not the same thing. HTTP3 is an application protocol on top of Quick. Quick is the transport protocol, right? And it, you know, and it layers on top of UDP. So HTTP3 is a application on top of Quick. You, uh, the way that we're writing the code in in Node, you can create your own application protocols on top of Quick. We're going to be exposing support for both. But we may not do an HP3 specific API in Node Core. We may end up leaving that to the uh, um, to all the frameworks out there, you know, the Express and the Fastifies and and and, and Happy's out there to provide that additional layer um, uh, rather than doing anything too Node specific. Uh, so I want to switch over uh, in the time I got left here uh, to look at some of the code just to give you an idea. 
Uh, the previous talk talked about empathy with uh, code reviews. Uh, this pull request came in at just about 90,000 lines of code changed and represents about a year's worth of work. It's the largest pull request that Node has that's ever gone into Node since it uh, uh, since it was created. So we ended up splitting it into three separate pull requests. Uh, one that adds the OpenSSL changes, one that adds the dependencies, and one that actually adds just the code of the implementation itself in Node. That third pull request that just adds this implementation is 25,000 lines of code. Um, that's because it has to do all of the the, the, the encryption or the TLS handling. Um, it has to do all of the error, uh, error control. It has to do uh, all of the uh, um, all of the you know the reliability, the message handling, the buffering, all of that kind of stuff. It, you know, all had to be implemented with the, within Node. And then we also had to write the JavaScript APIs on top of that that hide all this complexity. So where we see this you know six or seven lines of code. Um, you know, to actually create the client, you're talking, you know, 25,000 lines of code uh, of C++ under the covers, uh, um, you know, you know getting, our, getting everything running. So going back to the pull request, we have the pull requests open, and I think uh, a few heads exploded when, when I opened them and they saw how big it was. So it's taking a little bit of time to get through those um, and, and to, to review those. It's going to take some time. I'm setting up a few calls to help, you know, uh, some of the other fellow node contributors walk through those uh, and understand what is happening, teaching them about the protocol, teaching them uh, about, uh, uh, you know, how everything is related and taking them through the lines of code instead of just letting them go off on the uh, uh, on the review on their own. Um, the, uh, the implementation itself, it, it's, it's there. Um, it works. It's ready for, for testing. Uh, performance testing. It will be experimental for quite a while, however, and the reason for that is OpenSSL. We have an implementation of the of the quick support that has been contributed to the OpenSSL project. Um, that that implementation comes from the Boring SSL project. Unfortunately, the OpenSSL OMC, the, the governing body for that project, has decided they do not want to land those and will not land the quick support until at least OpenSSL 3.1 which is about one to two years away. Uh, and what that means is we will not be able to take quick out of experimental in Node until OpenSSL delivers uh, um, the quick uh, API support in a stable version. So we're looking at at least a year or two before we can bring quick out of experimental. Um, yeah. It, you know, if nothing else, it gives us time to make sure that it's rock solid. Um, um, I was testing some stuff today and about, you know, Every other test was <laughs> was seg faulting, so we have some time to uh, to, to get those things uh, uh, get those things worked out, and we have a ton of performance review and everything else that we need to do on this. So if you want to take a look at the pull request, I do have them. Um, they are in in quick or in the in the Node.js Node uh, repository. If you just do a search for this quick part one, there's part two and part three. Part three has all of the, the specific details of the actual quick implementation itself. There's been quite a few folks that have contributed to this, and I'm, you know, I'm, you know, they're all listed there. You see them on the screen now. I'm super happy uh, that they've been, you know, they've been participating, um, and you know, super excited to get this thing landed. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the update. Um, uh, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Let me know, um, and we'll uh, I'll go from there and. I'm ready to pass it on to the to the next speaker. Thank you. All.